another Tuesday. We have made it back to the Master Relationship Mechanics Show where our goal is to make sure you're having your best relationship with God, self, and others. We are providing tools here and inviting guests to talk us through our journey to always make sure you're having your best relationship. So I thank you all for continuing to join us and being faithful to the Tuesday night hour of 8 p.m. and continually joining us here. Um, the thing that we've had for this month of October is about door knocks and messengers of God. And this is one knock that comes in our life that we're always trying to keep out. We put extra locks on our lives, but unfortunately the death knock comes to our house and we have absolutely no say so over when it comes, how it happens along our journey. And that's how we get to this place of the Premature Widow, um, a wonderful organization started by a wonderful woman, Cardin Gilmore, and she's going to tell us about her story and her journey to get to this place of a Premature Widow. It's the unexpected visit of death when it comes to knock on your door, but realize that it's also a messenger of God. And I say that because that will take us right into our scripture tonight, and then I'll bounce back to the lyrics of the song that we heard. And our scripture tonight is in Ecclesiastics, and I'm going to give you all a little bit more. Usually I jump into one scripture, but I want to give you the whole context of this message. Ecclesiastics 1 through 11, because in my um, study Bible, what it is called is the round of life. So the round of life, it means it's a cycle. It's something that we will all have to get to at some point. And here is to everything, there's a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and to a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get, and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rent and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. And a time of war and a time of peace. What profit he that hath worketh in that, when any he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. And it says, he hath made everything beautiful in his time. Everything. Also, he has set the world in their heart. That's right, everything. As pastors like to say at church, he didn't say anything, some things. He says everything. everything. He probably said everything or thing to emphasize. Everything. 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 That's what pastors say. Okay, so I'm going to just follow along as the word as we've been taught. Remember that it's everything. It started off to everything. There's a season. And in the 11th, it ended. Everything is beautiful. So realize even the time of death, as much as it hurts us and breaks us, it is of God. So that goes back to the song that we heard, Thy Will. Whew, that is a hard pill to swallow. God's will. Because it's not something we've expected. It's not even something we signed up for. It's not even people. Death, we didn't even invite it. Death was so rude and didn't even ask for an invitation. It just showed up. And that's how it happens. That's why it's thy will. So if you all listen to the lyrics of that song, it was a lot of songs I entertained tonight. And some of them was to get us hyped. Some of them was to put us in a place. But honestly, we needed to hear tonight some truth about understanding thy will. And that's how thy will happens in our lives. It comes not necessarily at the time of our expectation. So that leads us into how we got to our wonderful guest, Miss Connie Gilmore, the founder of the Premature Widow. And the thing is, the Premature Widow is a group of women who have lost their spouse and they weren't expecting it. It was earlier than the expectation. And the expectation, because in our society, we see widows as old people. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because they've been married 40, 50 years. And, you know, it's because of their health and a little bit older. But the thing is, I think none of us sign up for the expectation. None of us sign up for the date. And she's going to tell us about her journey. She's going to tell us about this organization. And we're going to share some different events that she has going on to empower us. And what it does is 
leads us in our next song for this evening, which I think is really perfect for the journey that we're going on tonight. We're opening up and saying, death will come. Yes, we know. Heartbreaks will come. But what the song is coming is we are the warriors. We are ready to fight no matter what comes to our life. We are the warriors. We're not going to lay down. We're not going to let things run us over. We're still going to be victorious no matter what happens. So the next song is we are the warriors. And it is Corrine Hawthorne. And y'all need to listen to this song because I just love the lyrics of this song. It empowers you to work through your trials and your tests that are going on in your life. We are the warriors. So, Connie, we the warriors. We getting on the field. We going on the battle for all of these women all over the world. All over the world. And my husband joined us tonight so he can battle for the men who sometimes don't speak up for themselves on this issue in life. Y'all strong about a lot of things, but when it comes to your emotions and actually talking about them, you all become weak vessels to the night. He's standing in the gap on you all's behalf. So y'all don't leave us doing the song, the lyrical message of this evening. Come back so you can hear what this wonderful woman has to bless us with.
are not going to let nothing defeat us. Yes, indeed. I mean, you're all going to listen to the powerfulness of the words. I mean, it's an excellent beat. It's like a, um, a battlefield march to make sure that you're keeping up your strength. So it's an empowering when we're talking about tonight, premature widows, which I think is just something that's fabulous that it was started. So, Cunning, would you miss Gilmore? Cunning Gilmore is coming in and she is the founder of premature widows that I keep mentioning here because unfortunately, Unfortunately, she had to be one of the women who had to open up the door to death, no matter all the locks that she put on, no matter how tight she held her spouse, she had to open up the door and to let death come in. So tell us about that journey when it happened and what made you start a foundation to help other people? Good evening. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank you for having me. Um, I'm honored to be on your show this evening. Um, again, like you stated, I'm Connie Gilmore, founder of Premature Widow. Uh, Premature Widow was birthed out of an extremely painful season um, in my life on June 23rd of 2014. Um, I lost my husband of 14 years. Um, he was 38 years old at the time, and um, we had known each other since I, I was 11 years old. So we grew up together, uh, we were prom dates, our families were intertwined through church, and he's always been a staple and a part of my life, whether it be through friendship, relationship, and of course, ultimately marriage. And so when that experience took place, I literally found myself asking, what do I do now? Um, you know, when I looked around, widow, widows did not look like me. You know, I had witnessed my mother uh, go through this experience through the loss of my father 10 years ago. Um, but again, my mother was in her 60s. She had 40 plus years of marriage with my father. You know, the children were grown, the grandchildren were here, they had retired, so they had lived a full life. But when you are um, faced with such a tragedy and such a early stage of your marriage and such a young age, um, when you look around, you don't see people that look like you. And so my first um, dilemma was trying to find someone who could relate because um, my mother couldn't relate to me at that level because I had young children and she, you know, she didn't go, she didn't have that experience. And so it was very different. It was very challenging. Um, you know, when you're at that age group and all of your friends are still married and you wonder, how did I get chosen for this mm. journey? Why me? All of those questions um, come. Um, and, and to be quite honest, they continue sometimes to come. But, the, um, you know, I, I realized that God's will was, done um we uh, of course are believers so i don't have to look for my husband because i know where he is Amen. and so it's at the point now where i have to be um at peace with his journey and then part of that peace comes from me helping other women on their journey and so that's how premature widow was birthed um through a very painful um experience but i've transformed that pain into um a passionate purposeful organization um and so through strategic planning, we offer emotional and spiritual support as well as a circle of friendship, you know, love and fellowship. And what I found from the women that become a part of the organization is that's exactly what they're looking for. Someone who can relate, you know, we're, um, we're around the same age group. Um, so we, ha we have young children, we introduce our children to one another. It's, it's more of a sisterhood. Um, and, you know, we go out, we have, we, we, we pray together, we laugh together, we cry together. They know that they're able to call on me day or night. You know, I've answered calls in the midnight hour with tears to barely understand what the person on the other end was saying. And they needed someone that they could relate to, someone that was relatable. Because we all have friends and we have family and they're all well-meaning. But in a situation such as this, you want to be able to talk to someone who walked this journey and who's been there and can and can relate to the way you're feeling. And so that's, that's the, the services that we attempt to offer. Um, and it's grown. You know, I have premature widows in New Jersey, Atlanta, Miami, um, that I've all, you know, most of them I've met either through referral or by social media who's, who's connected with me. And um, so we, we're a growing group of women that are um, supporting one another, that are growing, that are journeying, journeying through this process um, with, with God first, leading us through it and with each other and we are um i'm hoping that it'll grow i find that this um widowhood is 
you know, it seemed in the beginning that it was an, a journey that was only for me. But, of course, once I got on that road, I realized that I wasn't on the road alone. Amen. So part of this organization is to let others that will come behind me and those that are already on the journey know that they are not alone, that we have a group here that's ready, willing, and able to support, to be there, to pray, to fellowship with, um, you know, and to understand, you know, the, the ins and outs of this journey because it's not an easy journey. And it's a journey that, um, you know, I, 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 a lot of times, related to waves you know sometimes you can go out to the ocean and it's calm and you can see far across the ocean and other times the tide is so high that you can barely see what's in front of you but you don't know when that tide is going to change one day it could be calm and the next day those waves could be raging but we just have to stand firm and know that um it will pass i often give the advice to you know we take it a lot of people say take it one day at a time I always advise to take it one hour at a time. Yeah, you look yeah. at the clock, and it's 8.23, and at 9.23, you say, thank God I made it through another hour. Because sometimes that's all you can do is count in increments of an hour. A day is too much to think about. Yeah, And it so, is. Um, you know, I just try to be um, an encourager, and through that, it's been therapeutic for me um, to encourage and to be transparent and to tell um, my story as much as I can. Um, I, I like that, what, how it was. I, I wrote down a few of the questions that you um, asked yourself because I think that's a question that everybody asks because I know it's a question I, that I've asked myself also as losing my spouse. That was one of the main things that you asked yourself. What do I do now? Absolutely. What do I do, what now? do, I do now? What do I do now? Um, and a lot of things, one thing you said, I was, I'm, I'm a really into numbers. When you told me, when you said 2014 and then you said the 14 years, um, you know, that just made me think about double sevens on the completion of things that God was working Amen. through in your relationship. Um, mm. But the thing is, what we have to recognize is everybody's journey is different. And I think that is what um, we always like to say, okay, well, I understand. I think we don't really need to just use that terminology, but say that I've been on the path and I can tell you my experience. Because like you say, everybody can't relate. Some people are at a different age. Some people don't have little kids. There's just different Absolutely. dynamics of it. Um, because like for me and my husband, of, of course he was married um, for 32 years. So that makes a big difference, you know, when you're talking about somebody who was married for that long. Um, I'm, exactly. And I'm not going to tell his age on the air, even though, I mean, you can go look it up somewhere else if you want to know how old he is and know how old I am. If that just is that important to you all, y'all can guess tonight if that just makes you feel better too. But the, the whole thing about what you see it is... Um, when you ask that question, what do I do now? What do you, you have to, what you, like you said, you have to find a place where you can make some kind of peace in your life and begin to heal. Because even if your healing is by empowering and walking and finding other people to network with, and I think the way that you said it, that friendship circle that you have, and it's not something, that even when we're talking about 2014 and we're getting ready to move in 2018, so you're almost to that four years, it's not something that you even tell people, I don't even think about. Because even here... I've remarried, and we can't even say we never think about our spouses. If that Absolutely. would that would be um, telling somebody that you're never going to think about them, you're never going to have a memory. That's just unfair and unrealistic. So it's not singing, don't have a memory, don't think about them. But like you say, what do I do when the memory comes up? What do I what do? do, I do? What do I do when the memory comes up? Do I let it put me in a prison? Do I let it enslave me to the memory? Or do I use that memory as a motivation to keep me moving on? So in your sister circle, what are some of the things as young widows with young kids, you know, what are some of the things that you tell them to do as far as how to build on those memories? Well, one of my first things I tell them to do is purchase a journal okay. um journaling was pivotal for me i would leave it on my nightstand i always had trouble sleeping um especially that first few years and so when i would wake up with a memory or a thought or something i wanted to say to him that of course i couldn't say i would write it down and it got it off of me so that the anxiety would decrease but it also gave me an opportunity to let it out and so um 
I've gone through probably three or four journals over the last three years. But what I found is that when I look back on those journals to 2014 or 2015, and I realized how far I've come and how dark of a place I was then then versus now, and it makes me feel a lot better because I know that if I'm in a better place today, then next year, you know, I'll be in an even better place. And so I just look at it as progress. So I encourage them to journal, to talk about it, to to not um, hold it in, you know, find someone you can talk to um, that you can get it out and, and speak with your children and make sure that you're speaking with your children um, and allowing them the opportunity to, to grieve because a lot of times they'll be quiet, you know, they won't say much and you'll think that they're doing okay, but they're internalizing a lot of things. And what I've also learned on this journey is that while I was um, a widow who was, I would consider a happy wife, every widow wasn't a happy wife. Yeah. And so every situation is different and some wives that i've come across were in abusive marriages or you know different situations and then he had then he you know his demise came about and so you they're grieving in a different manner and their memories are different and so you have to be very um you know empathetic to those situations as well and so um you know the big the biggest thing is is that we talk about it and and we get it out and you know they're able to you know, say some things and they ask me questions, you know, is this normal? Do you, have you felt like this? You know, the anxiety, a lot of us, you know, went through anxiety attacks, visits to the hospital, you know, thinking that you're sick and you're not, especially if you had a sick spouse and you're taking on some of their symptoms. Mm. I mean, it's all psychological and all those things will mess with your mind, but you have to be able to pray your way through a lot of things. And, um, you know, that's been, that's been the key for me. Um, my strength, and God, and he's kept me, and he has allowed me, you know, and I know that I can call on him when I'm going through those moments to pull me through, and sometimes it, it's tough, you know, you don't know what those triggers are, it could be the grocery store, mm. you know, a song on the radio, a smell, you know, a, a, a place to eat, a restaurant, a memory, all types of things trigger you under un, most unsuspecting places, and, um, and people around you think, you know, oh, it's three years, so why are you still at this point, you know, but, you know, unless you've been on this journey to know that three years is merely 36 months and that that's not a lot of time, then, um, you know, I just, I just, you know, allow them to have their say, but not knowing that you haven't experienced it. So you've experienced it for yourself. You don't realize just how um, deep of a cut it is. And, it, and you know, and it, it looks like it's healed on the surface, but it's not always healed beneath. And so it takes time. It takes time, and you have to allow yourself to heal, and don't rush it. There's no expiration date on grieving. Don't let anybody rush you through your grieving process. You know, take your time. No two people grieve the same or for the same length of time. What might have been my situation won't be yours. It just all depends, and so you have to be um, sympathetic to that and let, allow people to grieve at their own pace. And, um, you know, like I said, the children piece is very um important to me I, that's near and dear to my heart because i believe that you know a lot of times we ignore those things and then those things will rise up again when the child is a teenager um because they're angry and bitter because their father isn't there and we never got an opportunity or took the opportunity to deal with whatever they were thinking or what was going on in their mind at a younger age so i, I don't want um i make sure to encourage my parents with my widows with younger children not to miss that yeah, uh, that, that, is a key, uh, that is a very key component because we're so focused on our healing. Sometimes we lose sight of the fact that they are going we through, we do. through a journey as well. And, and saying that we need to make sure that we don't find ourselves caught in a place of depression, that we have stopped raising them and they have to begin raising themselves. Because when we're exactly. being silent and internalizing a lot of those things, all they see is us in a dark place crying all the time in a place of depression. Absolutely. And then they walking around on eggshells trying to make sure they're not triggering that anymore so then they become triggering exactly yeah so they can become actually very very dysfunctional if we're not um close to having that communication about you know what is going on what is triggering what is working on us and i'm not saying we yes we definitely should cry in front of them yes we should definitely let them know that we are feeling pain but also at that same time communicating with what their pain is and allowing them to express it in a healthy way also but it was something that you um you see it 
And now if I can recollect in my little mind here when you were you were speaking. Um, oh, I know what it was when you were talking about speaking up and journaling. Because I, I believe one of our, our key things that we talk about is silence kills. Because the thing is, and I see it more, I see it more in men than women because we're talkers. But we don't necessarily right. talk and vent necessarily everything that, you know, to everybody. But the thing is, we talk, but we might not vent our true emotions. But men don't talk about it at all. And it's actually Absolutely. statistically proven when they lose their spouses, men, it's usually a, within a year that they actually start losing their own lives because... They're not taking care of themselves. They become dysfunctional. Right. They don't, like you say, taking on those symptoms. They don't get the anger. They don't get the hurt out. And it starts turning into something that's killing them silently on the inside. And that's why I say silence does kill because it needs that component. Um, it really does. You got any questions? It really does. Yeah, I don't have a question. I got a statement. Um, but I want to say this one later. She is, um, I'm very impressed because what men you be talking all the time and about building a friendship and you guys been married for 14 years and 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 you are very most you are very strong emotionally physically and spiritually and you um listen that you talk and the way you carry yourself you, know, you are going to get a whole lot better but i got a question for you and 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 this gentleman that you were married to and you built y'all you have a strong foundation and when that and that sudden atmosphere hit your, you hit your, 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 hit you dead in the face, and you was, and you were, I know you was real young then, and you're still this young, and I'm trying to figure out how did you get your mindset on it to, uh, to cope with all this, and then after you figure how you get your mindset on to cope with all this that hit you in your face at one time unexpected, then what situation that you saw in your face that you're going to say to yourself that I'm going to take this to the public to start teaching and stuff like that. When, when did that came about? Because that's the part I want people to hear because a lot of people hear you got where you got, but they don't understand how you got that. I want you to make it where they can really understand because, see, once again, I'm saying again, you were real young. You happened. A lot of people can't, re a lot of young individuals can't rebound from that, so you were very special. Right. Um, so the first year uh, was definitely a cloud. Um, it was full of, you know, a lot of uncertainty, uncertainties, you know, what, 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 what will I do now? What will I do with the house? What will I do with the car? You know, how will I go through, navigate through this process and that process? And um, I wasn't at that place at all. And it wasn't until um, some, mm, almost a year later that I started a new job and I met another young lady there that had gone through a similar experience during that same year, and we became friends. And so through that, um, I noticed that she had a lot of the same questions I had as to where do we go from here? You know, who do we talk to? Who will understand what we're talking about? And I looked at her, and we talked over and over again, and I kept saying, you know, I want to start something so that we have our own. Because one thing I know that I realized, I've been in the church all my life. Mm. And I can count on my hand the number of times I've heard the word widow spoken over the pulpit. Yes. We talk about the single woman. We talk about the divorced woman. But rarely do I hear, if at all, anything about the widow. And so I wasn't even able to to get that. Now, we, they lump you in the bereavement ministry, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's just not all. Every, every level of grief is not the same. Amen. And so... I knew at that moment that there had to be something separate. And I, you know, I, I love, I love my church and it's a very supportive church and they will do anything for me. And it's not just my church. What I found since this organization has been founded is I did a lot of research on the churches in this particular area where I am. And they're even the largest of churches don't have anything specifically designated for the widow and especially the young widow and her children, That's or the young widow were and his children, you know, and so there had to be something that would at least get the, the conversation started so that the community would be aware, raise awareness to it, generate it, because it just doesn't exist within our community. Yes, our community is one of the largest communities that's affected outside of military-wise. Yes. And so, you know, I, you know, the, the, it, it's just one of those things where 
is someone had to start it. It had to start from somewhere. And so I hear from so many, even churches, ministries, widows that have come along that have been their 10 or 15 year mark. And they're like, you know, I wish something was available like this when I was early in my journey because there was nothing. And so it really isn't. And so we missed it because what happens is we have these large mega churches and even some of the small churches. And we have people within women in the church that are, um, they have a need that's not being addressed. And so it's a fine line, and it has to be somewhere where you feel like you're comfortable going to talk about this issue and if there's someone that's relate, that can relate to you. And so that's where it really hit home for me was because I realized that there was nothing, um, no, the support that I was looking for, I just couldn't find it. And so I found it, um, you know, and I prayed about it and I talked about it. Um, amongst my other widow girlfriend at the time, and she was the only other person that I knew in my age bracket in, in that situation. And I said, you know, and I kept talking about it and talking about it, and the Lord one night just gave me Premature Widow. And it's just, and I, it started as a blog on Facebook. I would just write stories, be very transparent, whatever I was feeling in that moment. And it has grown from followers on there to likes to just writing, and people are, um, magnetized by it and the blessing in it was that it wasn't just helping the widow woman but it was helping the married woman because the married woman was learning to be more appreciative Amen. of what they do have and you know a lot of times and I know I probably was guilty of it as well we'll forget and we'll complain and we'll nag and all the small things but when that illness comes and knocks on your door you can't remember any of the wrong because you're so focused on helping them get well and praying to God that he'll be healed. And then, you know, so they, they've learned a lot from watching um, me and listening to the stories to be, and, you know, and I encourage them, you know, don't forgive easily. Love on that man. Love on your spouse because you don't know when, if he's leaving out in the morning, you kiss him goodbye if he's coming home at night. You, you don't know. It's not guaranteed. And so you live, live life to the fullest with each other while you have each other. And that's so important because me and my wife always have a discussion about that. Um, be careful what your last words is because that's that's, that's right. That can it can that really be your last words. And it I could mean, be your last words. Yes, that's right. We have to humble ourselves. We have to humble ourselves each and every day, each and every morning, with our wife, with our husband. Just 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 humble yourself because pride can do damage. And I'm very impressed. With what are you doing? Uh, one thing I want to ask you, explain this about the age, because I don't want individuals to uh, get the wrong person about age, because I hear, hear you keep on talking about age, and and some people uh, might think you just deal with a certain age group. Kind of make that kind of clear for the people. Um, so it's no certain age. We just call it typically younger, young widows. There was a one time there was an age um, attached to it, but I since not attached to it anymore because it's open to widows of whatever age because I've realized throughout this journey that, you know, there are widows that not only can glean from what we're doing, but if you've been in, on this journey five or ten years, there's something that we can get from you as well because there's an experience that you can, we can, we can learn, glean from each other and support one another. And so it's for the widow. And, um, you know, we, we want to be of support in any way we can. We do have... Um, we do specialize, obviously, because a lot of us are under the age of 45 and have young children. So it's you very um, much attractive for that age group um, because, you know, we have children and we can be, you know, relatable on those issues. But if there are people that would um, like to be a part or would like to participate in our events and, um, you know, have some support from us that are over that age bracket, we open our arms to them as well. We are all one in this on this journey. It's a sisterhood, and sisterhood has no age limit on it. Oh, great deal. Um, one more question. Um, tell me about the kids, because the kids taking it, they're going to be taking it hard too now. Um, I heard you talk about the adults. Uh, where do the kids come involved in this? Because they're going to need uh, rehabilitation too. So um, the children, we like to get together and try to you know, get children together in the same age groups. And sometimes we'll do something very informal. It might be um, a lunch with, say, myself and my youngest daughter, who's 10, and other people that have children around that age so that they can do something together. It's not necessarily to um, 
have a talk at that particular moment, but the initial meet and greet is so that you can see that there are the children that are that are in your same situation. One of the first things that my um, daughter, who was just getting ready to turn seven at the time, said to me was, when it was time to go back to school, I'm not like the other children anymore. Mm. They all have fathers, and I'm not. So it was very important to me to connect her to other children who who were going through what she was going through so that she could see that she wasn't the only one. And so that's very important as well. And we try to, we're working on some programs now to get some um, clinicians um, involved that can speak to children or throw some events and have some team building exercises that give them the opportunity to open up about some of the things they might be thinking and feeling. Um, one of the premature widows has a, a, a child that is uh, of college age but has, has had various struggles with the death of his father. And so um, we want to be able to reach at that level as well. And so that's the goal, to work towards that. Um, we, we offer that to them, and, you know, they, they express interest, and we go from there based on what the age groups are. Well, um, Connie, I want you, I don't want to use up all our time because I definitely want you to tell us about the event, your retreat that's coming up because I want people to join that sisterhood, be a part of that camaraderie that you all have. Um, and before, are the children going to be part of this retreat? Are they able to bring their kids? Do you have some activities or things for them as well? So this retreat, because it's our very first retreat, is, okay. is just for the widows. Right? Okay. So it's not, the children are not there. This is more of a, get, a kind of getaway for the widow. This okay. is our first time kind of, you know, packing up, going to a really nice place, you know, having some downtime. A lot of them haven't had any of that since this happened. Um, and so it's an opportunity for them to do that during this time period. But we are um, going to do something over the holidays with the families, and we're looking to do something over the summer next year with the children. Um, like a something family oriented, maybe a retreat, a family retreat, so that the children can connect as well. Okay. So, what are the components, and how do people get to be a part of this retreat, and where is it going to be, so that people can find you and connect to this link and join the sisterhood? So, the retreat. I'm so excited about the retreat. The retreat is November 18th and 19th. It's at the Westfield Marriott in Chantilly, Virginia. It is um, a two-day, a day and a half, two-day session, um, and I've also just recently added a one-day fee for those who can't stay overnight but want to um, take part during the day on Saturday. So there are two different price groups for that. Uh, one, the entire retreat, if you're staying both nights, it's $180. It includes your meals, your materials, um, and it's just going to be a really, really, really good time. I have... Um, a financial planner coming in to talk to us about financial planning. We are talking about grief. We're talking about the uh, what, what What do we do next, the next step. We're talking about dating. We're talking about um, remarriage. We're talking every, every issue that they brought to me that they have concerned about, we are going to talk about it. It's going to be a very intimate and open form where we'll be able to talk. I have Karen Gray Houston, who's a former um, Washington, D.C. Um, news anchor who at the time, when she, uh, some 12 years ago, when she was on the air, she lost her husband. She's since remarried over this summer. She's going to be our keynote speaker at the lunchtime. She has um, an amazing story to tell us of, of overcoming and moving forward. And it's just going to be a really good time. Sunday morning, we're going to have a pink praise service, praise and worship. We're going to wear our pink. We're going to do praise and worship. I have Nikki Kennedy Boyd from Atlanta, Georgia, who was a former premature widow. She's since remarried. Um, she's a co-pastor there, yes. and she's going to come and give us the word. Okay. And we are going to have a really, really good time. And so I am excited about it. I encourage everybody to come. If you can only come for Saturday, we welcome you. It's $95. It includes breakfast and lunch and your materials. You'll be able to meet us all. We'll take a lot of pictures. We'll get to know each other. You'll connect with us. And let me tell you, when we connect, we connect. We exchange information. We start Facebook messaging groups like we are sisters we text each other like it's a group of um wonderful women that love to support each other we support each other's events you know we try to we, we stick together and so it's a great great organization to be a part of i would love to see each and every one of you come out and be a part of this it's going to be something to 
to be a part of. It really is. It's going to be amazing. I'm so, so excited. I know. I can hear the excitement in your voice. Um, I, I hate that we did not know about it a little bit sooner because we would have definitely got up to Virginia to um, participate. Um, because we are definitely yeah. getting out more and trying to um, lend our voices and in our experiences to these um, events. So I'm glad that I did meet you so that we can actually join forces and help each other Absolutely. get the word out. Um, because our journey is definitely not just empowering the women, but empowering the men. Because, of course, I married a the widow. Well. Yeah, so um, I, I definitely want that to be known. But, I mean, that, that journey is something that is, it's not a day. And I think that's what people think. Grief is a day. The incident happened on a day. And for some people, the incident happened over a time span. And that's what people need oh, to realize, too, that if your spouse was sick, you watch them die over a time span. So you're grieving Absolutely. through that time span as well. Through so, that time span. Absolutely. So there, there are different things that, pe different components of grief that people must realize that um, a lot of people like to think it's a 12-step program. And it's not, a, it's not a program. It's not steps. It's just the process. It's a strategy that's different for every individual person that's on the journey that they have to that's lay right. out for themselves. And that's the key component that you were talking about is that journaling. You have to write that plan out and that vision for yourself. It's what it is, how you need to do that communication. And so I am honored that you made time for us to join us on the air so that our listeners can hear another story besides just hearing our story and hearing our opinions and, and hearing our input because it's something that people need to understand. It's not just one person going through that has lost. And in this season, that is something. In this season, we need more people to stand up on the battlefield for each other to fight. Because a lot of times we can only, we fight for ourselves, but then when we get through, we're not willing to go back on the field to fight for somebody else. And Amen. so, right. so the key is, and that was why that song, you know, that "We Are Warriors" song really spoke to me. Um, that we played earlier because it was just that battlefield that I'm ready to get on there for you. I'm ready to fight for you. I'm ready to do whatever it needs to be to do to help people being saved because there's a lot of people who are in depression. There's a lot of people who are suicidal. There's a lot of people who are just drowning in their sorrow and they don't know how to swim out of it, whether it's some type of addiction. And realize these addictions can be work. They, a lot of people will drown themselves in work. A lot of people drown themselves in service. Anything that you're not doing in a healthy manner to avoid healing and becoming healthy is not working for you because you're avoiding dealing right. with the issue. And that is the key of this show. We want people to dig in, dig deeper, and recognize there are some issues that we all got to work through in order to become healthier people so we can have our best relationships. So, Connie, I am glad that you came in with us tonight to share your journey. And we are at that hour. We have to roll out. But I definitely want you to stay connected with us so that we can share and you can share with us uh, our different ministry aspects where we're pouring into people so that they can actually be equipped for this battle in their lives during this season. So it is perfect. The song that we're going out with is called Gracefully Broken by Tasha Cobb. And in this song, it talks about how we're broken, but God doesn't hurt us so bad that we can't keep going. So the thing is, we have to recognize it's God's grace in this brokenness yes. and in the pieces because he left us some pieces to put back together and so we can have, it won't be the same picture. But it will be That's another right. whole picture that you can put together if you just start putting these pieces together. So recognize in order to go along this journey, when you ask, what, how did I get chosen? God chose you because he knew you were strong enough to be gracefully broken. So realize That's that right. on this journey. When, it, when I heard that song, it really resonated with me to speak about who you were. So it was God put you on this journey because he knew you could be gracefully broken. And when he broke you, he knew that you would be strong enough to hold other people up through their gracefully broken journey. So I thank you for being that Amen. strong woman of God that he called you to be. 
So you all listen Thank to these you. lyrics tonight. And I know it's somebody out there that's hurting. Somebody out there who's their heart is heavy. Whether you're male or female, you do hurt. You do have a heart. You do have emotions that you need to deal with. And if you're going through, because in the scripture that we went through tonight, there's a time to heal. There's a time to mourn. So don't let that time pass you by and not recognize that you need the help that you need. There are people out there, just like Honey's Premature Program, you all need to stay connected and you need to tap into the program that is geared for you, that is relatable, that's connectable, that can empower you. So stay connected with the Widow's Word. Make sure you're here every last Tuesday to get empowered. Connect with us on our pages on Facebook, the Relationship Service Station, and the Master Relationship Mechanic Show, because this Thursday we have a transparent moment to share with you the difference between becoming hold, W-H-O-L-E, and wanting to be held, H-E-L-D. One of the differences, do we want to be touched by God or do we want to be touched just in our flesh? So, y'all join us for that Transparent Thursday moment. And as we're signing off this evening, recognize we all have to be gracefully broken in order for God to use us again. Thank you all. Signing off the Master Relationship Mechanics Show.